Not everyone can do an Iron Man, but everyone can do this Iron Man of food. Here's 15 places to definitely eat, and three maybe you want to miss on the island of Hawaii. What's up everybody, it's Nick from Hudat Travel. Now we had a fantastic time on our Hawaiian vacation and we also ate at some amazing places and we wanted to share those with you. Now we hit some great ones and we also hit some not so good ones, but this place you definitely need to go by far and ask any Hawaiian there. It has the best tacos on the island. It was Shaka Taco. Now Shaka Taco is, is just south of Kona, about 15 minutes in Captain Cook. Let me tell you, it's worth the drive. All right, I'll be honest. It was worth the drive three times for us to go in our trip there. It was awesome. Tuesdays, a great time to go. They have Taco Tuesdays, which were $2 tacos, which was a great deal. Now, they are a little bit different than the tacos that you normally order the rest of the days of the week, and we'll show you. They actually closed down for a couple of days and got a new truck while we were there and also rearranged. Now, this was the setup the first time we were there. They actually spread out the tables a little more. Outside, if it's not raining, a great spot to sit overlooking the ocean. It was a beautiful sight to sit and be able to eat. Now here is a little of the new setup. The new setup you actually order at the counter inside, not at the truck, at least when we were there. After your order, you get the little puck. When your stuff is ready, you actually go out to the truck and get it. Now here you see we actually got fish tacos, pork and beef tacos, all of them were great. They also have a bunch of different sauces. Absolutely try the sauces. Here you see more tacos and also a burrito. I liked the burrito, just the tacos were better. And on here, the final day, these were all fish tacos because, well, those were our favorite. Another spot on our list that we hit multiple times was the poke shack. Absolutely go here. Don't go anyplace else for your poke. It was fantastic. As you can see, there is a giant line. Now this line is spaced out because we were there during COVID restrictions, but it is absolutely worth it. Now you have to get there early because if you don't, as soon as they're out, they close down for the day. So get there early and well, get there often. Now it was a little bit expensive. You can see here it's market prices for their poke bowl and poke plates. Here's the inside of the place, really simple. You get to order from the case and they actually have how you order, depending if you have a bowl or a plate, you get either two pokes or four pokes. You also get one or two sides, depending if it is a bowl or a plate. Now they do have a wide variety of beverages as well. Here you can see two of the bowls. And then we also went back and got a plate, which was, let me tell you, well worth the money. Our next place that we recommend was Island Ono Loa Grill. Now we liked this place because they had a little bit of interesting way of advertising and well, it got us to stop, is they are cited as they are the eighth best burger in the United States. So, well, they got us. Well, here you go. Yelp's eighth best cheeseburger in the US. Now, now of course we did have to try something other than just their cheeseburger. I went with their fish sandwich, which was one of their catch of the day, was actually really great. Here you can see they have local plates, they have kids menus. Uh, we decided to sit outdoors, but here is the shot of the inside. Uh, again, social distancing was a major thing here. They did also have hot sauces, water to be able to drink, and of course they had Pepsi to be able to drink for their soda. Now here is the grilled ahi that I had for my sandwich, and here is the world famous eighth best burger in the US. Uh, honestly, both of them very, very good, and we definitely would recommend them. Now in the same plaza on Alihi Drive is Gecko Girls Shaved Ice. And well, it's exactly what you think it is. It's, it's shaved ice. It's a giant snow cone but it is a Hawaiian staple that honestly, you have to try at least once. Now they do have some choose your own adventure style that you can put together your own shaved ice. We went with one of their pre-concocted ones and it was really good and giant. It was big enough as you can see here for all three of us to eat. And trust me, little man, 
likes his sweets. This was right up his alley. It was a lot of fun to sit down as a family and go ahead and conquer this entire shaved ice. It had popping pearls and also had mango ice cream. Now you do see paper straws there. They are needed to be able to take in all of that as it melts. Now Bubba and Finn's is a place on Alihi Drive that I had absolutely beg you to stop. It is Dole Whip. And if you're not familiar with Disney's Dole Whip, well, <laughs> you need to be. It is a pineapple soft serve, but they also have all sorts of different flavors by Dole. These guys were fantastic. The, the son was the person that was serving us, and he was nothing but wonderful. Please, please stop in and support these guys. It was fantastic. Well, this one is for all you beer drinkers out there. One spot that you must stop is definitely Kona Brewing Company. Now, Kona Brewing Company is the oldest brewery on the island and, well, probably one of the most famous ones, but for good reason. Their beer, and I am not a beer drinker, is pretty decent. Now, we went here twice because, well, it was a great spot to stop, and the wife out of the two of us is the bigger beer drinker, so she wanted to go back. One now, we did eat outside both times that we were there. To be honest, I'm not real sure that their inside seating is available at this moment because of the COVID restrictions. However, it was beautiful. As you can see here, they've got the tiki torches going and you really have a wonderful tropical feel as you're sitting there drinking your flight of beer or as I had one of their seltzers, which was, well, to be honest, pretty good. Now I did try all of the flight of beer because, well, I'm in Hawaii, I have to. We liked their Hawaiian pizza so well that we actually did have it twice. This one was a little crispier. They also had cheese bread, which we had, but what I really recommend was their pepperoni pinwheels. So I've got a little bonus place for you. Now, when you're at Kona Brewing and you're waiting for your table, because we waited one time one hour and the other time almost 90 minutes, if you walk down the stairs there where you're going to put your name in, you are going to find Hale Coco. Now inside, they've got all sorts of different cocos that are made on the island itself. They're actually made right here, but they are grown on the big island. They have coffee, espresso, chocolate drinks, Hawaiian tea, they have all sorts of different refreshments, and they actually make the chocolate right there. You can see here through the window and the back here is actually them making the chocolate right in front of your eyes. So it's a really cool spot to be able to spend some of that time that you are waiting for your table. They had some free samples, they were really fantastic, and they did their job because of course we ended up buying some. Upstairs you've got some art exhibits and some tables to be able to sit and drink those drinks and really was a fun spot to spend our time. Now just a little south in Captain Cook again, we had Black Rock Pizza. I will have to be honest, it was some of the best pizza I have ever had. They are a really small place that just opened uh, during the pandemic, and honestly, I wish I would have gone back a second time. They were great. Now, we did do a takeaway. We did not eat inside, but here you see inside, quaint little spot, uh, tons of different drinks, open kitchen, so you can see them making your pie right there. It was a really, really great little spot. We also did get some breadsticks. Those were fantastic as well. Overall, uh, if you get to eat there, absolutely do it at sunset because this is the sunset driving away from Black Rock. They did have some outdoor seating as well. Now here's our pie. And I know some of you are just freaking out that there's pineapple on it, but hey, we're on Hawaii. Come on, you need to try it. It was amazing. Our breadsticks were amazing as well. Broke the Mouth Grinds is a spot that you absolutely have to stop. Now it was on Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives, and I used to go to these types of places all the time. I didn't even know that it was on the list until I walked in and saw Guy Fiari's face all over the wall. Now it is a little bit of a hole in the wall, but the food is amazing. When you go, you absolutely have to try the garlic furikake chicken. It was absolutely the best thing that I had on the whole island. And again, I had a lot of food. You're seeing it all right here. The service was absolutely friendly. Now we did have to wait a little bit because, well, they were packed. 
you see all over that it is Hawaiian and Asian inspired. The wife picked up the Kahlua pork, which you got a side of rice with, and it was very, very good. I got a combination plate with the chicken and also beef bulgogi. Uh, again, you get a little bit of that sauce for the chicken and rice. You also get a couple different side choices. The wife got the noodles and I got the kimchi, both very good, but just note, the noodles are cold. Now the southernmost bakery in the United States, Panalu'u Bake Shop, is a spot that we again stopped. Okay, we stopped there three times. It was fantastic. And it was wonderful when we were going to Volcano House to stop there and grab some of their delicious treats for our breakfast. Now it is a great setting. Uh, it's a little bake shop that you can smell the delicious baked good wafting out into the parking lot and as you walk up. Now, they do have a little bit of a general store. They've got some ice cream and whatnot. Uh, a lot of fun little trinkets to be able to pick up. But the crown jewel is definitely their baked goods. Now, here you see, actually, they're kind of wiped out. We were there at about 4 o'clock. Uh, they closed at 5. And so they didn't have all that many treats. But the first time, when we went again, they had definitely more there. And it was fantastic some of the best things that i had were the bismarck and also the lupia pie which were just i can't say it enough they were amazing they were fantastic outside they had little spots for you to be able to sit all of them socially distanced they also had uh, spray so you could wipe it down they had koi ponds they had another uh, farther out seating area uh, on the other side, they actually had restrooms for you to be able to use. If you are heading to the southernmost point, this is definitely worth the extra 15-minute drive to be able to go. Here you can see some close-ups of some Hawaiian uh, donut styles, the halupia, and also I believe that was a taro uh, donut, basically. Uh, and they were great. Near Hilo, we decided to stop at Kiyoho Grill and had one of their famous one pound lau lau. Now, if you're not familiar with lau lau, we had been to Oahu before and had lau lau. It is meat that is steamed within banana leaves. So it is, it is definitely interesting to try and it is definitely a Hawaiian must do. Now their combination plate also came with the Kahlua pork, which my wife absolutely loved. That was her favorite on the entire island, but it also came with poi and a lot of your other just Hawaiian things to try. It was a quaint little diner. We really enjoyed it, and uh, we would definitely recommend the Kahlua pork, and of course, trying the Lau Lau and Poi. While up north, we stumbled upon the fish and the hog, and we're not disappointed that we did. Now, we came in from the Hilo side, so it seemed like there was nothing around, and then this restaurant but be prepared for a decent wait, but the food is really great. There is barbecue all over the island. This was great barbecue, and my wife had the local fish, which was, again, fantastic. Also got a quesadilla for our little one, which is not pictured. Also, if you see this girl, the one on the left, Safina, the bar manager, get one of her signature drinks. In the north, we stopped at the Kohala Burger. Now, this was a fun little spot, but I will warn you, it's expensive. Like, my tacos were like $30 expensive. The people in there, the staff, were unbelievably friendly. They treated little man like a king. The hostess ended up giving him a bracelet, and during the, the meal, he might have had a little bit of a meltdown, and they gave him a little bit of Dole Whip. So he was a little happier then. Up front, you do have a comic book shop, and in the back, then, your seating area for the restaurant. The wife decided to go with a fish burger. It was kind of like a salmon patty. And then I decided to go with the, well, really expensive fish tacos. The tacos were fantastic, but I'm really not sure that they were worth the almost $30. Up next, we're going to go to the Volcano House. Now, this was takeaway. This was room service because, well, we didn't really want to sit in the restaurant with our little one. So this is the lunch and dinner menu. Uh, there was no extra charge for it to be room service, and it was delivered 
unbelievably quick. It was about 10 minutes. During our stay, we got the clue of pork pizza, not once, but twice, because, well, we really enjoyed it. And it was actually fairly filling. And then we also got the fish and chips. Now the fish and chips were battered in a coconut. They were really good. Uh, the wife thought they were a little greasy, um, but I really, really enjoyed them. And then we also picked up one of the pizzas and one of their specials. The special had Portuguese sausage, which I really wanted to try, and overall was really quite good and filling. Staying in the volcano area, we decided to hit the Tuk Tuk food truck a couple times. It was really good Thai food. The wife and I have been to Thailand. We've actually been to the area that this food truck was from, the Chiang Mai area in the northern part of Thailand, and it really was authentic Thai cooking. They had a great menu, very easy to understand, and you could add protein to any one of the dishes. We did get summer rolls with a peanut sauce and a Thai chili sauce. We also ended up with the Masamin curry, which was one of my favorites, and also Pad Thai, which is my wife's favorite. We did go back and I ended up getting pineapple chicken curry, which was really, really good. And also the day that we went, they had plantain spring roll. Not exactly what you normally think for a spring roll, but it was really good. We also picked up Tom Kai Gai soup, which was great. We actually could have just split this ourselves and not had anything else. Waiting for our flight out of Hawaii, we ended up stopping at Swirl Tea. Now they are known for their bubble waffle and all sorts of different cereal that they put in and around their ice cream. It was a really fun treat to go in and grab. We ended up getting one of the cookie monsters that had all sorts of different cookies in it. It really was a fun treat to share with the family. And now for the maybe avoids. Now it's not that you shouldn't go, but we didn't have the best time. The first one is Yumeki's. Now, Yumeki's is in the brewery area. It was a great atmosphere on the outside. We didn't really go on the inside. However, they did tell us it was gonna be about 15 minutes for our food, and it was about 45. So with a little one, that's kind of discouraging. Also, when we got our poke, well, it was a little bit fishy. Bottom line is I would try something else, but if I want poke, I'm going to the poke shack. This next restaurant actually pains me a little bit to put on the maybe avoid list. However, we really did have a problem with the service at Papa Kona's. Now, Papa Kona is a fantastic restaurant. Our food was amazing. And as you can see, the view and the actual restaurant itself is absolutely beautiful. It is open air. It is right on the water. You're able to sit there and really enjoy some time. But we also have a little man in tow. And our little man, well, gets a little bored sometimes when he is eating out. So we decided that we would have just a, a quick breakfast. They do have some fantastic drink options, but my wife ordered just a coffee. I'm talking regular black Kona coffee. And that actually came after our food arrived. Now we didn't order the weirdest things on the menu either. I had Loco Moco, which was great. It was fantastic and an absolute staple. If you're in Hawaii, you definitely need to try it. And then my wife got French toast, but it just took forever and there was no communication from the waiter at all. Now the last one on the maybe avoid list is the Kohala Coffee Mill. Now this is on because, well, it's a very short time period that they're open and we decided that we would get to go up there because we heard it was the best ice cream on the island. And while my family has always had a thing that we taste the ice cream on whatever trip that we go on. Well, we decided we'd order and we were blown away that one of our favorite spots, Mackinac Island, actually had their fudge in Hawaii. So we decided to get that. We got two cups for the adults and one cup for my little man. We decided we'd sit on the outside and here are the size of the ice creams. By the way, those are four ounce cups. This is barely a scoop of ice cream. The wife actually got a double and that was still barely the scoop size of a scoop of ice cream. So overall, we decided that for the price of it, which was almost $18, that this place may be not on our list. It was great, the ice cream was good. I wouldn't necessarily say the best, Little man, of course, enjoyed his ice cream. He always does as well. But overall, this might be a skip for us. 
Well, that's it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please help this channel out by hitting that thumbs up. It really does help spread out my videos to a wider audience, so then they can hit that thumbs up and spread it even farther. And as well, if you like this, please hit that subscribe button and also ring that bell notification to be notified when I release new content. Well, that's it from Hudak Travel. I hope you've enjoyed the spots to eat in Hawaii, and we'll see you real soon.